بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله We praise Allah Azza wa Jal, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth. And we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My brothers and sisters of Norway, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reward you. And I would like to thank whoever was involved in bringing me out. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reward all that are involved. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor to be here standing before you. Inshallah Ta'ala, before I start, there's a couple of requests if I can humbly ask, because I have a disability. I can only be as, I can only be as, uh, what's the term I'm after? I can only be as uh, in focus as the crowd is with me. So please, can I humbly ask, you know, if you have your phone, please switch it off. Don't be too distracted with who's coming in and who's coming out. Wallahi, I have flown 24 hours exactly. We left the plane in Sydney, 10.15 uh, p.m. And I landed in Oslo, Norway at 10.15 p.m. Sydney time. So flying for 24 hours. So please, if I can humbly ask, inshallah ta'ala, that you give me your undivided attention. And uh, another general rule, that is good for all the believers is whenever you come to a talk or you come to a lesson it is very important that when you sit in that lesson that you think and that you believe that the whole talk the whole speech is directed to you completely many of us we come to a lecture or we come to a talk or to the Jum'ah you know to the Friday khutbah you hear the talk and you think man mashallah I wish my uncle was here he needed to hear these words or you know what, I wish my brother was here or I wish my sister was here. He spoke about everything that they do wrong. I wish they were here so that they could hear these words. If these are thoughts that cross your mind, then I beg you to have fear of Allah because this is a sign of a corrupted heart. So inshallah ta'ala as we sit and we listen, we need to understand that everything is being said. You need to apply it to yourself completely. My brothers and sisters, the title is Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't need you, you need Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us, my brothers and sisters, in truth, whether you're, and I hate using the term, religious or not religious, there has become a very disgusting attitude with both, with both parties. And there has become this arrogance in our hearts when dealing with Allah Azza wa Jal. And wallahi, today I'm here to tell you that no one is free from what I'm talking about. There are those who are, and again, I hate using the term religious because who defines who is and who isn't religious. Today we've become so shallow in our understanding that the bead makes you religious or that the hijab makes you religious such a shallow understanding of our deen but be it as it may today you have those that are supposedly religious active on deen he's supposed to be a da'i many of us alhamdulillah we've been praying for 10 15 years on deen mashallah people look at you as an active person and deep down in our hearts, in places we don't talk about. In our hearts, we feel that Allah Azza wa Jal, He owes me a favor. That Allah owes me something. That, hey, look at me. I've been praying for 10 years. All these people doing haram, looking down at the people around you. Alhamdulillah, I don't do what they do. I pray, I fast, I read Quran, I do what I'm supposed to. So therefore, though we don't say it on our tongues, but wallahi in the depths of our hearts, in places we don't talk about, in your heart you feel like, I'm better than these people and Allah owes me something. And then there's the other side of the fence. 
the brother and the sister who don't pray, don't fast, they don't have time for deen, don't come to me with your fairy tales about the Prophet of Allah and don't come and tell me that what I'm doing is haram and halal. Let me do as I please, you know. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, today I'm here to speak about both of us. My brothers and sisters, we need to understand something with depth. That Allah Azza wa Jal, the King, the Master, doesn't need anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your salah. Allah doesn't need your fasting. Allah doesn't need your tasbih. Allah doesn't need your dhikr. Allah doesn't need your money. Allah doesn't need the $10 or whatever currency you use as you leave. Brother walks into the masjid, prays his Jummah, and as he leaves, you know, he leaves a couple of dollars in the box. He feels like Allah owes him something. Well, I got news for you, man. Allah doesn't owe you anything. We are in debt to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. When? When did the time come when you and I started thinking that Allah owes us anything? The Prophet of Allah sitting with Sahaba in the authentic hadith. And please, you know, I don't want you to just listen to the hadith because I'm sure you've heard it. But I want you to live the hadith. I want you to imagine you're there. I want you to imagine that there's no one in this room. The Prophet of Allah is speaking and I'm there in the gathering and I'm hearing these words. Because we feel that, look, Allah needs me. You know, now, now we've got gangsters on the street, mashallah. Brother, he puts a couple of tattoos on him and now I need to respect him. I need to fear him because he's something. Or maybe you drive a nice pretty BMW. This attitude towards Allah. Well, my brothers, I have news. Allah doesn't need anyone. The Prophet of Allah in the authentic hadith sitting with the Sahaba, Allahu A'lam, maybe in a gathering like this. But sitting with Sahaba, sitting with the greatest Ummah that ever walked the earth. Not my opinion, not the opinion of the Ulama and the Mashaykh. Allah Azza wa Jal in Quran says, I am pleased with them and they are pleased with me. The Prophet of Allah speaking to these people, what does he say? He says, I see what you don't see and I hear what you don't hear. He says, The Prophet of Allah speaking to Sahaba. He says, I see what you don't and I hear what you don't. He says, verily the heavens have squeaked and they have every right to squeak. What's he talking about? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, the seven heavens have squeaked. You know, the seven heavens, my brothers and my sisters. You know, everything you see in this world, scientists tell us now today that we can only see a keyhole. We can only see a minor percentage of what's out there. The sun is supposed to be one of the smallest stars in our galaxy. And it's millions of times bigger than the earth. In fact, I heard one scholar say, he says, if we were given, and please give me attention. He says, if we were given one second to name every star in our galaxy, and our galaxy is one of millions. He says, if we were given one second to name every star in our galaxy, you ready for this? He says, it will take 300 trillion years and you still would not name every star in our galaxy. And all this is Samawat al and the Prophet of Allah in another hadith, he says, do you know the distance between the first heaven and the second? He says, it's a distance of 500 years. The Prophet of Allah is saying the seven heavens have squeaked and they have every right to squeak. Why, O Prophet of Allah? He says, Ma fi arba asabi'. He says, there isn't room in all these heavens. There isn't room for four fingers except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. And you think Allah needs your salah. 
angels from the moment they're created to the moment they stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, one continuous sajda. And when they stand before Allah, they say, Oh Allah, forgive us, for we did not give haq to your ibadah. Everything is in tasbih of Allah Azza wa Jal. And I got brothers and sisters walking around with a big chip on his shoulder. He thinks Allah owes him something. Ya ibadi, authentic hadith could see. Ya ibadi, Allah is speaking. He says, oh my slaves, if the first of you to the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all together collectively, all of you, not some, if you were all together collectively and worship me and worship me and worship me until you all come like the most pure heart amongst you, this does not increase my greatness in any way, shape or form. And for the gangster, Allah says the opposite is true. Ya ibadi, O my slaves, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all to come together collectively and all of you were to sin, sin, sell drugs, prostitute, zina, do whatever you please. If all of you, you know, I've got brothers now who walk around with alcohol bottle. Brother, don't come to me with your deen, man. Everyone grows a little bit now. Mashallah, he's a big sheikh. Fine. Do as you please. Allah says, if all of you were to come together collectively and sin till you become like the most criminal heart, this doesn't take anything away from my mulk. And you think Allah owes you something? Allah says, Ya ibadi, Allah is speaking Quran. Antum al fuqara illallah, you are the destituted ones to Allah. And still pride and arrogance in the heart. In the authentic hadith, the Prophet of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Listen, Wallahi, don't listen to me, man. You know me, I'm, I'm, maybe, you know, maybe you think, bro, you know, what's wrong with this brother? I'm telling you, Allah is speaking. Hadith could see. Your prophet is conveying the message. Allah says, oh my slaves. Who's he talking to? He's talking to you and I. Allah says, oh my slaves. Every one of you is naked except who my clothes. Today a brother buys a pair of Gucci shoes. You can't talk to him anymore. Sister buys a Louis Vuitton bag. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> I don't. We used to be friends. Allah says, every one of you is naked except who my clothes. Where did this pride and arrogance come from? Allah says, every one of you is hungry except whom I feed. And every one of you is lost except whom I guide. And do you think Allah needs you? Where is this honor towards Allah Azza wa Jal? Where is this respect? Whether you're a gangster or you think you're a sheikh, where is this adab come? You think Allah needs us, my brothers and sisters? Do you really? Prophet of Allah speaking to Sahaba. Who's he speaking to? The greatest ummah that ever walked the earth. And he says, none of you will enter Jannah through your actions. None of you. So I got brothers now who, because he's been to Hajj, you can't call him Muhammad anymore. He gets upset. Brother, that's Hajj Muhammad. It's Hajj Fatima. Really? What, you, 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 you feel in your heart that, that you're a level above the rest now? Prophet of Allah, he spoke to people who happily, openly, 
willingly gave their lives, their families, their wealth, their homes. They, they, they gave every fidaka abi wa ummi ya Rasulullah. This was common language amongst the Sahaba. We will happily sacrifice our mothers and our fathers for your pleasure. The Prophet of Allah speaking to them. You think Allah owes you something because you put $50. These people gave their lives and still felt like it was insignificant in the eyes of Allah. The Prophet of Allah speaking to this Ummah says, none of you will enter Jannah through your actions. So they asked, O Prophet of Allah, even yourself? He says, even I. Has there ever been a greater Abid to Allah than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Has there ever been a greater Abid? Has there ever been a greater Alim? Has there ever been a greater Prophet? Has there ever been a greater husband? Has there ever been a greater teacher? Has there ever been a greater mercy to humanity than the Prophet of Allah? But even he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic hadith, he says, even I accept and only if Allah azza wa jal is to have mercy upon me. The Prophet of Allah tells us of a man who worshipped Allah for 500 years. He worshipped Allah for how long? For 500 years. Then when he came and he stood before Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah says to the angels, take him and enter him into the paradise through my mercy. You know what I love about the hadith? The sincerity of the man. He says, Oh Allah, though I appreciate that I'm going to paradise, but I heard you say, enter through your mercy. Oh Allah, I don't want to enter through your mercy. I want to enter through my actions. I worshipped you for 500 years. Surely, surely that is worth something. Today we have this, that I'm better than the rest. That look at my beautiful beard, man. Look how it wiggles as I talk. And look at my, you know, look at my nice white abaya. And look at my nice coat, you know. Who do you think you are, man? So Allah says, you want to enter through your actions? He says, yes. Allah says, no problems. So he orders the angels and he says, bring the scales forward. Allah says to the angels, put his 500 years of worship on one end of the scale and just only put the na'mah, only put the blessing that I gave him to be able to see with his eyes. Just the blessing of seeing, put that on the other end of the scale. The na'mah of seeing outweighed the worship of 500 years. So he says to the angels, take him and cast him into the hellfire. Then and only then did he realize that my ibadah equal to nothing without Allah's mercy. Then he begs Allah and he says, Oh Allah, I am content with your mercy. To understand with yaqeen, with certainty, my brothers and my sisters, Forgive me, you know, if the words are a bit harsh. Wallahi, forgive me. But I'd rather rattle the cage here than we die and stand before Allah and get the biggest shock of your life. But to understand, I'm not talking to the crowd. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. To understand with conviction that everything you see around you here, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Wallahi, every single human being that ever came, that exists, that is ever to come into this world, please stay with me here, please. Every human being that ever came, that exists, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. Every human being, every jinn. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, every animal, every insect on the face of this earth, Wallahi, every country, every government with all its might, 
with all its power, with all its technology, with all its money, with all its luxuries, with everything that you and I desire, with all its armed forces, its rifles, its tanks, its air forces, everything you see around you, everything, with the exception of nothing. Every country, every land, every tree, every ocean, every bird that takes flight, every beast that walks on four legs, every grain of sand, every leaf on the tree, every country, every planet, every star. Wallahi, the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven, the fifth heaven, the sixth heaven, the seventh heaven, all the angels, Mikael, Jibrail, Israfil, the ocean above the seven heavens, the eight, the eight that carry the throne of Allah, the throne of Allah, the kursi of Allah, all are dead. All are dead. Nothing moves, nothing stops, nothing makes, nothing breaks, nothing gives, nothing takes, nothing rises, and nothing falls, nothing harms, and nothing benefits. In Allah. To understand with certainty that La ilaha illallah. With conviction. He is the Almighty. He is the King. The Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Hayyul Qayyum. He's the ever living. So you might tell me, brother, but I'm living. What's so special about Allah's living? No, your living is dependent on His existence. Whereas He exists without you. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. Allah doesn't get tired. Allah doesn't get fatigued. Allah doesn't sleep. Ibn Kathir mentions in the tafsir of this ayah, he says, you know, some Jews, they came to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and they asked Musa, they said, oh Musa, does Allah sleep? So Allah asks, so Musa asks Allah, he says, oh Allah, do you sleep? So Allah answers Musa. He says, Musa, tonight you have to stand the whole night and you have to hold two glass bottles and you can't sleep. So Musa being a prophet, he does as instructed. He stands up holding his two glass bottles. The first part of the night passes by, his eyelids are getting heavy. And before the night could finish, he fell asleep, he falls to the floor and the glass bottles come crushing down. So the angels, they returned to Musa and they said, they said, oh Musa, if Allah was to sleep, but just for a moment, the seven heavens would come crushing down onto the earth like your bottles smashed the floor. Allah needs you my brothers and sisters you think Allah needs me I want to ask you something sincerely has Allah ever let you down once really has Allah ever let you down created you from nothing there was a time 
لم يكن شيئا مذكورا الله says you were not even in existence you were not even in history your mention wasn't even being made you were nothing I got brothers and sisters who walk around with a big chip on their shoulder Allah says you and there was a time you were nothing you were not and please forgive me I know it's a bit vulgar I know the sisters in the back but really if I can't speak truth then what are we here for entertainment you weren't even that piece of sperm you weren't even that from a piece of nutfa from a piece of sperm you know Wallahi forgive me I understand the sisters here and I know some people will feel uncomfortable but but you know I'm, I'm, I'm I didn't fly 24 hours to entertain you Wallahi sperm you were sperm you know what that means if you were on the floor I challenge anyone if they would have picked you up me me I was a piece of sperm. I was nothing. Allah from a piece of sperm. From nothing to a piece of sperm. In three layers of darkness in the womb of your mother. He designed you. He sustained you. He fashioned you for nine months. Where was your money then? Brothers and sisters told me, man, I don't have time for Allah. You and this religion, what, what's wrong with you people, man? For nine months in the womb of your mother, who taught you to swim? In here, in here. For no, who taught you to swim in the, in the womb of your mother? Who taught, what school, what power, what universe, what government? taught you to swim for nine months who sustained you for nine months what kudra what ability where was your Louis Vuitton bag then where was the BMW you drive then for nine months he was there for you every step of the way then after nine months without any of your powers, without any of your ability. Allah made the impossible possible for you. Ever seen a woman give birth? You men didn't fall from the heavens, I can assure you. Go to your mothers. And if you're a father, well, then you don't need to go to your mother. I'm sure you were there for your wife. Allah made the impossible possible. I mean, you explain to me all physics and all know-how. How does something like this come out of a womb like this? Yet Allah made it possible. And He welcomed you into this world. You had hands, but you couldn't grab. You had legs, but you couldn't walk. You had a mouth but you couldn't eat. Who provided for you then? Who? He provided in the breast of your mother milk that till this day with all their science and all their know-how and all their money, till this day they haven't been able to produce a baby formula that is even half as good as the milk Allah put in the breast of your mother. In winter, he made it warm. In summer, he made it cool. Who did that? Who did that? He provided for you when you were nothing. He allowed you to crawl. Then he allowed you to walk. He allowed you to talk. He allowed you to become the young man and the young woman that you are. And now, now, because you have a couple of dollars in your pocket, and now because you can put a sandwich together, 
and now because you have a car outside to take you and bring you you don't have time for Allah you don't need this you say is this the thank you we have is this the adab that we have with Allah Oh Allah, you brought me into this world naked, naked. Na you were naked. You were barefooted. You were uncircumcised. You had nothing. Everything you have, where did that come from? Who gave it to you? Wallahi, you know, my brothers and sisters, forgive me. You know, I, I, Wallahi, I speak to you in a way that I like to be spoken to. I'm not, I'm not really much for these, you know, feel good talks, you know, I'm, 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 I like to rattle the cage, you know, this is me personally, and this is what I'm saying, so, so, so therefore I like to share that with you, you know, but sometimes, you know, I ask myself, I have a bit of a confession, you know, I talk to myself a lot, you know, sometimes I'm driving in the car and, wallahi, I feel sorry for the people that look at me. Wallahi, I, I, honestly, I talk to myself a lot, you know. And there's times, you know, I'll be driving in my car and, and, and I think to myself, you know, I want you to imagine, yeah? Those of you who are fathers and mothers, you already know what I'm talking about. But those of you who are probably not fathers and mothers, you think, no, no, but really, this analogy, I'm sure we can all, we can all imagine. I want you to imagine that you bring a little baby home helpless child and you found that outside it was cold it was maybe naked and so you seen this baby and you ran and you put a blanket over it and you brought this baby home and you sheltered it and you you know and you clothed it and you fed it and you were there every single step of the way you changed its diapers when it needed it you took it to the hospital when it was sick and you were there and you never failed this child, never. Not once did you ever fail it. And the joy on your face when they took their first steps. And the joy in your heart when they started to eat on their own. And the happiness when they started to put words together and create sentences. Then, when this child that you gave your life to now that they could walk on their own and talk on their own you ask them for a favor you ask them for a small request and they turn around and they tell you I'm too busy leave me alone man honestly would you accept that really you know I, I, I this you know it's a rhetorical question so I'm sure every would you accept that yeah Allah you created me from nothing you brought me into this world. You've given me so much bounties. So much bounties. You know, my brothers, maybe because of the corruption of the heart and the societies that we live in, they led us to believe that to see, you need healthy eyes. No, you're wrong. There are millions of people who have eyes, but they can't see. It is Allah that allows you to see, not your eyes. And many of us think that to walk, man, you need a pair of legs. No, you're wrong again. There are millions around the world who have legs, but they can't walk. It is Allah who allows you to walk. And to hear you think, man, you need a pair of ease. I tell you, you're wrong again, for there are millions around the world who have ease, but they can't hear. It is Allah that allows you to hear. So much that Allah has given us and still arrogance in the heart towards Him. Still too proud, too busy. What is it, my brothers and sisters, that has kept you away from Allah? What, your car? Your money? What, your business? You know, sometimes, and of course Allah is above any example, but sometimes I think, how does Allah feel? 
I gave him all these things. I gave her all these things. And instead of thanking me and showing me gratitude, they don't have time for me. And still, and still, subhanahu wa ta'ala, above all this, he still doesn't let you down. You know, every beat of your heart, every beat of your heart, your heart seeks permission from Allah and Allah grants it. Has Allah ever said no? Every breath your lungs take, they seek permission from Allah. Has Allah ever said no? Even when you were sinning, even when you were doing that which is haram, that which displeases Allah, Allah still said, beat, breathe. Maybe, just maybe, they will wake up and come back to me. So my brothers and sisters, in short, Allah doesn't need anyone. Rather, it is us that needs Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go and search the world. I challenge anyone. You will never find ultimate peace and happiness except with Allah. This world cannot give you peace and happiness. Allah alone can give you peace and happiness. We've been fooled. We've been, as the expression goes, we've been duped as the Americans say. Today we think peace and happiness comes through money and cars, women and men, homes and positions and status. Happiness only comes from Allah. Do I need to give you examples really? Any? Are we not in tune with what's happening around the world? actors and singers and celebrities we call them what we call them stars look at the deception we call them stars you know the star see how it's nice and pretty and so high you can't get to it they're stars they're celebrities yet they're dying to drug overdoses on a weekly basis suicides again and again What's happening, man? What's going on? Fame, they have money, abundant status, as you know. Cars, pick one. Women, can't remember who I had last night. Yet, I'm taking my own life. Yet, I find I find peace for a couple of minutes in a syringe. What's happening, man? Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Allah says, and whoever stays away from my remembrance, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, then for this person is a miserable life. What good is money and cars and women and children? What good is all this if you yourself don't even know what your purpose on this earth is? What good are all of these things if I don't have true contentment and peace in my heart? You know, I came across a saying. It says happiness is not how much you have. True happiness is how much you can live without. That's real happiness. And wallahi, my brothers and sisters, you will only ever find true happiness with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, and I will end with this. Allah says, wa Allah says, verily in the remembrance of Allah, 
What happens? Does anyone know the ayah? Allah bi-dhikri Allah tatma'inna al-qulub Allah says verily in the remembrance of Allah You know now Well I can't say speaking I've been shouting about Allah for the last half an hour yeah And I'm sure one way or another your heart has moved No money No drug No girl No nothing gave you that buzz Nothing gave you that ecstasy Except the remembrance of Allah that feeling that I can die right now, Wallahi, and I'm content. And I'm content. The Prophet of Allah, authentic hadith. He says, whenever a group of people come to remember Allah, verily four things will take place. You know, to be a believer means you believe in the unseen, one of the pillars of Iman. Today we see cameras, lights and people. But I take an oath by Allah, there are angels in this room. Otherwise you're telling me that the Prophet of Allah is lying or misleading me. Verily, whenever a group of people come to remember Allah, verily four things will take place. The angels, they will come and they will join this gathering. And they will rub their wings against their shoulders. You know, that feeling you have, that's the angels rubbing their wings. He says, and every one of them will have their name mentioned to Allah. Today, you and I, we kill to be noticed by a celebrity or by someone that's famous. Please, sir, please, ma'am, can I take a selfie? Can I just say to my friends that I met so-and-so when I was downtown? What if I told you Allah is mentioning your name? And then the Prophet of Allah, he says, verily the tranquility, the sakina will descend down onto the gathering. And by the end of the gathering, when every one of us picks himself up to leave, know with yaqeen that Allah Azza wa Jal would have forgiven all of your sins. So that ayah that I was mentioning before this hadith came up, Allah says, verily in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts, they find what? They find rest. Many people say, no, that the hearts find happiness. No, I sort of beg to differ. Because you know, some people try to convince you that money doesn't bring happiness. <laughs> Brother, give me a million dollars and I'll show you smiles you've never seen before. And some people try to convince me that, you know, you know, if you're a boy, girls, and if you're a girl, men, right? That the opposite sex doesn't bring you happiness. I tell you, brother, give me a couple of blondies and I'll show you happiness. Re re really, let's be real. And people try to tell me that cocaine and either you haven't tried it before, brother, or I don't know where you live, man. But notice how Allah doesn't say happiness. These things, yes, they do bring you a temporary happiness. But Allah says, my remembrance brings you rest. That security in the heart. That contentment in the heart. No drug, no dollar, no pound, no euro, no woman, no man, no car, no house will ever bring you. Except and only in the remembrance of Allah. So my brothers and sisters, as I end, let me remind myself and I remind you that Allah doesn't need anyone. It is us who is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you think you're religious, wake up to yourself and stop looking down at people. And if you think you're a so-called gangster, wake up to yourself and remember you were a piece of sperm once upon a time. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says, amazing. He says, how can anyone who traveled through the passage of urine twice, how can this person still have pride and arrogance in his heart?
How? So my brothers, turn back to Allah Azza wa Jal, make tawbah and humble yourself before him and know that it is us that needs him subhanahu wa ta'ala and he subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of nothing and no one. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayhi.